was a rumble in the jungle once I heard dad was outside again counting birds And mama plugged in the nightlight and I saw the queen of the world Welcome to the Golden Hour Birth Podcast. I am your co-host Liz. I'm your co-host Natalie. And we're finally back in person tonight. It feels like it's been a little bit. But we have wonderful Bonnie on. She is the best friend of one of my best friends. So, <laughs> and Alex is sitting in the <laughs> fun little connections. <laughs> Hello, Bonnie. Thanks so much for coming on tonight. Of course, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so, if you want to go ahead and start us off and just tell us a little bit about your family, I know there's a little meet cute story in there. Oh yeah, <laughs> sure. So. I'm Bonnie Chapman. I met my husband, Tyler, back in, I think it was 2011, kind of just like through mutual friends. It was actually the the night before Thanksgiving, when everyone you know goes out and likes to drink a lot. And we went to Harpo's and we just hit it off like right away. And throughout the night, as we were drinking, you know, I was like talking about, you know, my favorite movies or, you know, just like different things as we're getting to know each other. And Sabrina with Audrey Hepburn had always been my favorite movie. So I mentioned that to him. And then like after, you know, a night of drinking and thinking, who knows what this guy remembers about me or (laughs) like, like, did I really even say those things to him? Who really knows? I was asking him like, what was my favorite movie? And he was like, oh, Sabrina. And it was like one of those moments where I was like, oh, okay. Like you're a decent guy. I could, I could date you. And I mean, the rest is pretty much history. So we've been together ever since. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead and like when you guys decided to start a family and what that process is like. Sure. So we got married in 2018 and we always knew that we wanted kids. I'm an only child and I always wanted siblings growing up. And then he has a brother and, you know, we just knew that we wanted at least a couple of kids. My initial thought was like, hey, like, let's have five kids. And he was like, oh, yeah, let's do like like two. And then, you know, like I was like, we'll be in the middle. Let's do like three or four. So we'll, we'll see. But we always knew that we wanted kids. And, you know, being a teacher for 10 years, I love being around kids and just child development. So after we got married, we knew that we wanted a couple years just to ourselves and bought a house and just kind of settled in, got two, we had two puppies. So that was our kind of our first start. And then just decided to start trying for a family. And it was actually around COVID. I'm trying to remember the timeline of it all. Like when everything was going on, decided to go off of birth control. And, you know, you hear stories, you know, of people where it's like it takes their bodies sometimes like a year, you know, like a long time for some people to, for their bodies to adjust to things. And, you know, so we wanted to kind of get a jump start on that. Did not happen to me. (laughs) We got pregnant pretty much right away, which was very fortunate for us. And then we went in for our nine week, like the first like appointment that you can go in for and found out that we had what's called a blithed ovum, which is basically like where the, it's like a missed miscarriage. So it's like where your fetus has already basically like absorbed back into your body. So like when you go in for the ultrasound, there's not a fetus in the stack anymore. So that was a little bit of a shock. We were like, oh, okay, well, that's not how we expected that to go. Yeah. So, so at that point, so we were like nine weeks and they gave us options of, you know, they're saying, you know, it could take a couple of weeks, but like your body is eventually going to, you know, try and pass this and have like a natural miscarriage, or you can go ahead and have a DNC and just kind of like be done with it. So, and we were like, let's just go ahead and do that. And then we can move on as opposed to having to wait who knows how long. Mm -hmm. So we scheduled that a couple days later. So we had a DNC and that was in. July of 2020. And then my doctor gave me recommendations. I can't remember the exact timeline, but you know, of like, you should probably wait, you know, this many months or this many weeks before trying again, you know, you should have like, you know, a couple of cycles, things like that. But we got pregnant again in November. So very quickly, and then found out on December 1st that we were pregnant with Sabrina. (laughs) So and it was a whirlwind (laughs) because it was First of all, COVID, you know, December 2020, everyone's like in the thick of it, right? And then we were selling our first house and then moving into our current house (laughs) on December 11th, like within the same day. And it was like, like, you know, like what, two weeks after we had found out that we were pregnant, we're like, oh, wow, this is a 
a lot going on, but this is a, it's a good year. <laughs> yeah. It's an exciting year. Um, right. <laughs> yes. So that's kind of how we got to find Sabrina. So yeah. she was, yeah, December 1st is when we found out. And then we went in, of course, it was really nerve wracking because, you know, like having that first like ultrasound with our first pregnancy, like you go in it like that nine weeks and you're like, well, there's nothing like my doctor. And thank goodness. I don't know if all doctors are like this, but she was very understanding. So they were able to get us in a little bit earlier with my pregnancy with Sabrina. I think I was like seven or seven and a half weeks or something, basically like to the point where like, yes, like it's a viable baby. Yes. They can get some type of heartbeat, but earlier than like the nine to 10 weeks. So that like, you know, you're not waiting quite as long and having that anxiety, which I thought was very nice. And yeah, everything was great when we went in for that. So we knew we were good to go. That's good. Yeah. How is pregnancy overall? Well, I mean, so they always say, I mean, the old wives tales, like that girls, <laughs> like you're like more sick or like yeah. they steal your beauty, you know, like <laughs> things like that. And I, I mean, I definitely feel like I had like more girl symptoms, mm-hmm. especially first trimester. Like I was, I definitely had morning sickness, but nothing compared to like what a lot of people have. I definitely felt like my skin, you know, was different with a pregnancy and like my hair was different. I mean, super duper fatigued pretty much all the time. But other than that, actually, it was like a really, really smooth pregnancy. I felt like I was eating really well. I felt like motivated to work out like most days, which I mean, for me, working out not pregnant, like, I mean, Alex knows like working out not pregnant. I'm like, yeah, pass. Maybe twice a week. (laughs) That's true. Also still teaching, but it was virtual. It is. It was a lot. But yeah, I had, it was kind of like you got that burst of energy, which was nice at like that second trimester. And so, yeah, I mean, overall, I felt wonderful in my pregnancy until I didn't. (laughs) Until, so it was like 27 weeks. I think it was maybe to like 26 in a couple days, but close to 27 weeks, Mm -hmm. Uh, which is, you know, like really close to like that threshold of like going from the second trimester to the third trimester. Mm -hmm. So like bodies changing, hormones changing again, sometimes new symptoms, you know, coming up. And I just kind of started to feel like off, like more tired. I had like what I thought was like bad heartburn, like indigestion, kind of like a burning in my throat almost where it was like, you kind of feel like you have to throw up, like you can't throw up or you like, you don't, like your body doesn't really want to throw up, but it's kind of like sitting there. And then like, not really like bad headaches. I mean, I do get my grades, mm-hmm. unfortunately, but not like terrible headaches, but just kind of like random, like headaches that would kind of like pop up. And I would take, you know, like Tylenol or like the things that like are okay to take, like during pregnancy are like more recommended than not like a little bit of Tylenol here or there, or I would take like Tums or something to try and like settle it and like nothing really helped. And then we got to, it was like 27 weeks and three days. And it was like, I just, I couldn't even sleep because like the pain got so bad. Like I was just so uncomfortable. And it was like a Thursday night and I'd been, you know, pretty uncomfortable for a couple of days. I talked to my doctor and like the nurse's line and stuff. And they were like, yeah, you're doing like what you should just, you know, keep bumping the fluids and, you know, take the Tums or whatever if you need to, you know, avoid spicy foods, you know, all the things that to help with like heartburn and things like that. And it got so uncomfortable that I was like, yeah, no, I don't, something does not feel right. So it's like 2 a.m. and poor Tyler, he, he's a night owl. So he hadn't even gone to bed. And I like come out of the bedroom and he's like, you know, on his way to bed. And I'm like, I don't feel very good. Like, I don't know if this is something, but like, I feel like maybe I should call like the after hours thing. And it was like one of those words, like, I feel bad. You know, like, I'm like, I'm that person who's going to call the doctor at 2 a.m. and be like, hey. But so I called the the line and, you know, she called me back and it wasn't my doctor, but it was, you know, like one of the ones in the practice. I was telling her my symptoms and I was like, no, I don't know if it's like a virus or like what it is or if it's just like really bad like symptoms from like getting into like my third trimester but like I just don't feel good and she was like okay like you know have you taken your blood pressure because I have had high blood pressure for about five years probably now but it kind of like comes in waves like it's like it would it just was never really consistent so I've been on like low dose Mm -hmm. medicine but in my pregnancy it had been my blood pressure had been very low And so I took my blood pressure and it was like 165 over like 98. And I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's high. That's definitely higher than like it should be in like what I'm used to having. And she was like, well, 
you can go in now if you want to, or you could wait to be seen first thing in the morning. Like it's up to you. Like if you think you can sleep, then, you know, go ahead and get a couple hours of rest and like come in first thing to be checked. But if you don't think you can sleep, like if you wanted to go in, she's like, it's probably, you know, a GI bug or like really bad heartburn, like you're saying, but you know, it's better to be safe. Like, okay. And I told Tyler, I'm like, yeah, no, I can't sleep. So I mean, like, we might as well just go in now. Like, why? Why wait? Like, why am I going to wait like five more hours? Because like 2 a.m. So we went to St. Luke's, which is where my OB is and like where I planned on delivering and went in and it was one of those like short staff nights. So like we go into the ER and they're like, oh, you're past 20 weeks. So we actually automatically send you up to labor and delivery. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's fun fact. Great. Didn't know that. Okay. But, but I'm glad I don't have to sit down here in the ER yeah, with everyone else. That's that. great. So they started checking us in though downstairs because they didn't have, I guess, like the staff upstairs and one of the people down there was like, oh, congratulations. Are you guys here to deliver? And like, we laughed and we were like, huh, no, like, no, we're just here to be checked out. Like, it's probably like a bug. Like we're only 27 weeks. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Little did we know. So <laughs> we get like checked in at like, you know, 2.30 a.m. at St. Luke's, you know, they take me upstairs, labor and delivery, which those rooms are very nice. I don't know if you guys have <laughs> been there <laughs> for the labor and delivery, but those, those yeah, rooms are I was, nice. I was born there. Were you really? That's fun. I bet the rooms have been updated. (laughs) They are. I hope so too. Right. (laughs) But they are very nice. So we're up there and God, like the nurses, God bless them. Like, I know that like they like just go through so much shit and like, but like my veins kept collapsing. This is like what happened the other day too. And so like, they're trying to like draw my blood, but then also like obviously put an IV in and like my body's like, nope. Not going to do it. I'm like, that's weird. Like, my veins are usually great. I'm like, boop. Like, symptom body. Like, something's probably not right. So anyway, they're trying to get all of that. Finally get my blood work done. Get an IV. And they're like, you know, it probably is like a stomach bug. So they put me on, I don't know, some type of medicine to like help with the pain thinking it was like, you know, the heartburn stuff or, you know, and like fluids in case it was like a GI bug, even though like I hadn't been like throwing up or like getting sick. And then, I don't know, probably like an hour passes or something. They come in and it's just like one of those, like it feels like a movie scene. And the nurse comes in like the one who was like my main nurse and she's like standing there talking to me. And then like, but like five other people like are coming in the room, like just hooking shit up. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, what are we doing here guys? And like, she's like, okay, so I need you to stay really calm because you could have a seizure or a stroke at any moment. And I'm like, I I mean, again, like 2.30 AM hadn't slept and I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) Like, what are you talking about? And Tyler is like sitting in the chair, like, what is happening here? Like, this is not real life. And so she's like, yeah, we got your blood work back. And so two ish weeks prior, like three weeks prior had been like my gestational diabetes test, like where you you know drink the stuff and they do all the blood work. And, you know, they probably just do like full panels of like all sorts of blood work then. And compared to like my blood work, you know, two and a half weeks ago or whatever, like my numbers were just like completely different and my liver enzymes were like off the charts high. And then like my platelet level was like super duper duper low, which come to find out means that you have help syndrome, H E L L P. So she's like, you know, you need to stay calm. Like we're hooking you up to all this stuff and like the medicine's going to help you, but like the pain is not heartburn. Like it's your liver failing. Like, oh, okay, that's a new one. So we're like, okay, like, what does this mean? Like, is the, and of course, you know, like, I should have said too that like, they've had me hooked up to that, you know, the baby monitor like the whole time, you know, like you go yeah. in there and they like strap that thing to you. So like Sabrina was doing fine in me, like just happy as a clam, like great heartbeat, like no problems with her. She's like, I'm chilling guys. Like what's going on out there? Meanwhile, <laughs> she's trying to kill me. But so they're like, so with this, it progresses pretty quickly you will probably be giving birth this weekend. And we're like, no, 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 no. We don't have a nursery set up and we're 20. So that's not, that's not a thing. And we're like, I mean, like trying to stay calm though. We're like, okay, like what, what does this mean? And so the, then they're like, oh, so do you have a birth plan? And I'm like, <laughs> no, like I haven't even made it to my third trimester yet. Like, 
So at that point, yes. So they did give me, they were like, do you have a birth plan? And I was like, oh, can I just have my doctor deliver the baby? Like I went Dr. Morgan, like she's been my doctor forever. Like that's who I went to deliver. And they were like, you know, as of right now, your numbers are, you know, they've read off numbers to me, which mean nothing to me, but they're like, you're stable enough right now that like you could have a choice. And I was like, I really don't care at this point, like hearing what you're like telling me, like whatever is healthiest for me and the baby, like I will do. So I don't have a preference, but they were also like, we have to transfer you to mercy because so whatever like the levels are, I couldn't tell you, but it's like mercy is like, like mercy and children's, I think are the only two in the area that can take earlier than 32 weeks. I want to say because of like lung development for the babies. And so like St. Luke's can take like 32 or 33 weeks and beyond. Mm -hmm. They're like, so we're going to have to transfer you over there. Like, oh, okay, great. And they're like, but, you know, we're calling your doctor and, you know, we'll get it figured out. We'll let you know as soon as we hear anything. But then they were like, you know, taking my labs like every hour, maybe even less than that, to see like what the changes were. And it was like rapidly changing. So before we even got transferred to Mercy, they were like, yeah, you're going to have to have a C-section and you may not be awake for it. And we're like, Okay. Like that's definitely a different plan. And then of course, you know, so at this point it's like, I don't know, 5 30 a.m. or something. And I'm like, I guess I should call my mom. <laughs> like, I guess I should let her know what's going on. And like, and also like what we had school. It was a Friday morning, like early. Yeah. And so I'm like texting. Was I texting you guys? I can't remember. Oh, that's right. From my phone. Yeah. Texting all of us. And he's like, Oh, by the way, Bonnie's about to deliver. And we're like, what? I'm what? sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get plans ready for her, I guess. Right. And I just remember every time he would send us a text, we were like in the middle of teaching, and every time he texted us, we would all come out to the car <laughs> like, oh my God. <laughs> and someone would have to go like update our assistant principal. Yeah. And it was, it was, that's like all I can remember. Yeah. And it was like one of those, like, because I was still virtual teaching too. Yeah. Oh, Rachel and I were virtual, yeah. and you and Anne were in person. Right. So, and it was one of those things where it's like somebody had to like cover our class. And like I was supposed to have like a lunch date that day with Rachel and a student. And I'm like emailing people. I'm like, I'm going to have to cancel a few things here, people. Life, life changes here. And so call my mom. But like, so my mom was really close to St. Luke's Hospital. And I didn't want to like worry her before she got there. So I was like, so we're at St. Luke's and, you know, here's kind of what's going on. You know, I think you should probably come up. They're allowed because at that point they were allowing two people. Yeah. Um, and so Tyler was there and then she could come in and she's like, okay, should I go in for a couple of hours and like wait to hear from you? And I'm like, no, probably not. <laughs> like, Cause I was like, maybe I'm downplaying this too because I didn't want to like freak her out, but I'm also like, okay, yeah, no, you should get here. So she got to St. Luke's and at that point they were like starting me on like the steroid shots, like to help the baby's lungs develop. Cause they're like, you're delivering this weekend. So like 32 weeks is like where baby's lungs are fully developed mm -hmm. going for that milestone this time. <laughs> and so they start giving me like those steroid shots, but they can only give them like every, I don't even know, six to 12 hours. So we fair to say we only got one round <laughs> of the shots for the lungs. I know. So they started me on those shots. So my mom, you know, gets there and she like sees me hooked up to all this stuff. And at that point too, I was pretty like loopy. I don't know if either of you had to be hooked up to like magnesium or That's anything. I was going to ask for you. On yes. Time. I haven't, but. It, heard it is not a good time. Yeah. It is like, I, I, I try to think about like what to even compare it to. <laughs> and the only thing I can think of is going to sound so bizarre is like, if you were like dead and like hovering above your body, like where you like, like literally don't feel like fully alive, but like you're aware of everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But like, but you also like still feel super sick. You're just like so out of it. It's like a whirl, like, like nothing feels real almost. And then you just like feel super duper sick. Some people get terrible, terrible headaches, which for whatever bizarre reason, you know, I always get headaches and other reasons, but mm -hmm. nope, not for that. Didn't get a headache for that. Just throwing up on that. <laughs> that was like a terrible side effect of it. But yeah, so the magnesium though. But I mean, hey, it saves your life. So yeah. it's worth it. But yeah, so by the time my mom got there, I was like hooked up to all this stuff and she's like, wait, so what's going on? Tyler's like trying to explain it to her. And my mom is like, oh, God bless Mary. She's like getting into like, not like a fight, but she's like talking to the nurse and the doctor's like, oh, no, I don't think you guys understand. She's only 27 weeks. Like she's not delivering, you know, like as if she knows more than these medical professionals. And they're like, no, ma'am, like 
that that's that's the only option. Like that's like you want your daughter to live, we're delivering. So she stayed with me and then Tyler, because we got two dogs at home too. Tyler like ran home to let the dogs out, like, you know, six AM ish and get like clothes because we're like, Oh, this is so yeah, this is happening now. Right. No, <laughs> no. Didn't have like cars no, we didn't have didn't a ton of stuff. We hadn't had our shower yet. No, yeah. Nothing. So, I mean, like, we had, like, some, like, we had, like, the crib, but not put together. You know what I mean? Like, some stuff there. But, like, literally the nursery, which I also find ironic, the weekend prior to this, he'd, like, ripped apart the nursery, like, taking out, like, the, like, the baseboards, like, taking everything out. Because, like, he was going to completely redo this room. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, well, <laughs> yep, got to put that back together now. And uh, let's, let's do that quickly. So, he ran home to take care of the dogs. And then they <laughs> started to transfer me to mercy but they couldn't have anyone in the ambulance which i don't know if that was like a covid thing or if it was just like space in an ambulance like i don't know what's allowed mm-hmm. so my mom followed and i just remember like being so thankful too because i don't know if everyone else is like this but like i'm very kind of like strange about like my doctors like i like to have female doctors you know what i mean yeah. or like I just feel more comfortable with like the females around me, like medically. And it was all women. <laughs> I had like, for, like the ambulance people. And then like my nurse from St. Luke's went with me because she did like keep me hooked up to all this stuff and like keep monitoring me. And so she rode with me and like got me checked in at Mercy. And I just remember thinking, cause I was like throwing up and I just like felt so sick. I was like, I'm just really thankful that there's like all these really nice women here, you know, like, the things that go through your mind. I know. <laughs> I know. I love you guys. <laughs> Thanks for being here at this moment. And then, so we get to Mercy and here's like another like serendipitous moment for us. So we, so Tyler's not there yet. My mom's like probably parking. They pull me around to like the elevators or whatever. And they're, they always have like music playing in like the lobby at Mercy. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, you know, I practically lived there for four months, so I know. It's like always got like the only time, like in all of our time that we spent at Mercy, that I heard Moon River was when we were about to like get on the elevators to go upstairs, like when we had first gotten there. And Moon River is like a song that like has meant something to like Tyler and I and like to my grandmother. It was like a very like special song who passed away when I was 18. And so it's just like always been like something that like our families like loved and it's been like a special song and it was just like playing over the speakers and I was like, and we played it like at our wedding multiple times, like, and I just like brought me like such peace. I actually have a tattoo of it, Moon River. Oh. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, like be okay like yeah. it's gonna be fine but drugged bonnie's really like okay it's gonna be you know like whatever's really happening so then we get upstairs and i mean that's like when it just got like i mean absolutely crazy because like at that point they were like you have to have a c-section your platelet level is way too low like you'll bleed out basically like if we give you other stuff so we have to like you have to go under general anesthesia tyler cannot be in the room so, and they're like, okay, so with her being 27 weeks, four days, like her lungs are going to be like super underdeveloped. So it's like we had like all my doctors that were coming and talking to us, like the anesthesiologist, my doctor, <laughs> God bless Dr. Morgan. She was there. <laughs> she did deliver my baby. So she was there. And then, you know, like the team that was going to be working with me, but then there was also like the NICU team, like the doctors coming in like, Hey, like this is who I am. And this is the role I'm going to play. And you know, like the baby team that was going to be like in the room too. <laughs> I mean, my mom even afterwards too. I mean, we were like, how many doctors were there? And like, did anyone keep these people straight? And I mean, they're doing their job, which was wonderful. But at the same time, it's like, you need someone in there like scribing this stuff. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm drugged up. Don't refer to me, please. people. <laughs> refer to someone over there. I'm only comprehending half of what everyone's saying. And so pretty much, I mean, so obviously Tyler got there and then they prepped me. Which I will say, like, traumatizing experiences, number one, being in the operating room, and you, I couldn't have, like, any anesthesia or anything, like, at that point, like, any type of, like, pain stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I was on magnesium or, like, that stuff. They had to fully prep me without anything. So, like, and it wasn't, like, painful, painful, you know what I mean? But, like, getting the catheter in and just like you're strapped down. Did either of you guys have C-sections? No. I mean, you feel like you're being, what is 
Jesus on the cross. You know what I mean? Like your arms are just like strapped. Yeah. And so it's like, and you're like looking at like the bright lights. I've never been in an OR room before like that, you know? Yeah. And then of course they're like doing all these things. And someone like hands me a cap and is like, you need to put this on your head and cover your hair. And I'm like, how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> and I, 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 I get, Dr. Morgan's like, I'll get it. I'm like, thank you. I got so many. Because I mean, I, they were like rushing at that point too, which is like, I'm trying to like keep myself calm. But also it's like, you can see like, it was a serious situation. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like they were moving quickly. And then they had, here I am like this. I'm probably like the, one of like the nightmare patients where they're like telling, they tell stories later on. Like, yeah, this bitch over here was trying to tell me what to do about my job. <laughs> They had like the oxygen mask on me and the anesthesiologist had been like very like adamant about like this has to be done and this, this and this for the intubation and because of her levels and whatever. And so the nurse is like holding it. And I mean, I was like having like a panic attack. You know what I mean? And it's like, like everything's happening. And then I'm terribly ticklish too. Fun fact. I have like a tattoo on my hip and like when I got it, it didn't really hurt. It tickled. And so as they're like prepping me, you know, they're touching like my belly and like they're, you know, like cleaning it and like they're like basically like marking where they're going to cut. Right. And I'm like, it's like horribly ticklish, you know, and I'm like trying to like move, but I can't move. And I'm like trying to like say something, but they've got this mask on me. And then they're like trying to reassure me. They're like, oh, no, no, we're not cutting you right now. And I'm like, I know that, but this is so uncomfortable. Stop touching my belly. Like, I know. Um, so I'm like, I can't communicate to you. But so they have it on there. And I was like telling her, I was like, I feel like I cannot breathe. And the nurse like said something to the anesthesiologist. And she was like, no, she has to have it. I was like, oh, God. Okay. So they had to like keep that on, which did not help my anxiety at all. And then, I mean, that's pretty much like the last thing. Like I remember until, I mean, I couldn't even tell you the next thing, how many hours later. So she was born at 2.30 which was exactly 12 hours after we were checked in. Yeah. So yeah. within 12 hours, wow. it's like, oh, yeah, hey, oh she's gosh. here. Which is insane. Yeah. So it exactly like health syndrome is your, yes. your liver is failing. Yeah. So it's like, so it stands for, I don't, I'm going to butcher like the names of it, but it's like hemolysis. So something like with your blood okay. is the H and then it's elevated liver enzymes is like the EL. Okay. And then the last LP is low platelets so they it's extremely rare which there's my luck of getting that so very very rare there's not a lot of research like they they don't know like what causes it the best research that they have so far is that they think it's like a weird variation of preeclampsia because it does usually present with high blood pressure and like like neurological like with like the headaches and the things like the visual disturbances and things like that but of course preeclampsia does not like shut down your liver or like change your, your blood. It's still very dangerous and not a good thing, but yeah. So they think that it just has to do with like the placenta. And so basically it was like the placenta, like it, you get sick so rapidly that like the only cure for it is literally to get the baby and the placenta out of you. Mm-hmm. And then like within, you know, a certain amount of time, like you just, your body starts to normalize again. It's bizarre. That's so weird. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very weird. And then in the other weird thing is, so we're pregnant with our second. And so talking like to the doctor about like, like, can we have more kids? Like, is it safe? Like, what should we do? And again, there's not like a ton of research because it is so rare, but they, you know, it's like the percentages, it's like you could do it and then never have it again. Mm -hmm. Or some people have it not in their first pregnancy, but they have it in their second pregnancy. Some people have it. So it's actually even more rare, which again cool to have it as early as we did so preeclampsia can come on like 20 weeks and beyond Mm -hmm. (laughs) but help syndrome usually doesn't present until like 33 weeks or beyond and some people actually get like preeclampsia and help after they give birth so like even if they go like full term like 38 39 weeks they can have it happen to them after like right like right Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah so was the blood pressure a sign of help? Is it it's a sign of help? It is. Yes. And it was. Yeah. For me. So not everyone has the blood pressure that gets high with it, but mine was, and it stayed pretty high, which is another reason why they were like, you could have a stroke or a seizure. 
Like, we need to mm-hmm. get this down. Yeah. Well, that's how you had to be intubated, too. And that was more so for the blood. Okay. Because, like, my blood was, like, thinning so rapidly that, like, mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was, yeah, not not a fun situation. I had to get a tooth removed the other day because of a cracked tooth that they did when they intubated me. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just remember her yeah. husband texted us, and she's he was like, Bonnie's being intubated now. We were like, what? Why? Why? Are yeah, like, like, wait a minute. Now? Like, why are like, you being intubated for giving birth? Detail that he was like, oh, yeah, basically, like, she she might bleed out. And we're like, what? What do you mean she might yeah. bleed out? Oh like, God. it was it was a very, it was scary. Yeah. That day. Absolutely. Yeah. It was- well, it doesn't help, too, though. So, like, Tyler is, like, not the best communicator in situations that are like that. You know what I mean? Well, Plus, obviously, he was stressed. So, I mean, like, that yeah. didn't help at all. I mean, luckily, he was texting us. Yes. Like thank goodness. Well, yeah. Oh, for he, sure. Yeah. Yeah. At least get some updates. Yeah. And then I felt bad for him. So, he couldn't be there. For, so, neither of us were there for her birth, basically, which sucks. And then he was able to be brought in after. But he, so he gets brought in and I'm still, like, you know, dead to the world over here being sewn up, like, intimated. And then Sabrina was being intimated because she wasn't breathing when they first got her out. And they were having trouble intimating her as well. Mm-hmm. So he had to, like, watch that, which, mm-hmm. not fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Were you in a uh, normal operating room or were you in a labor and delivery operating room? Great question. I have no idea, actually. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it was huge. It was a huge room. Because we had a Alyssa on, who's like my friend's sister-in-law, and she had like such a big blood clot uh-huh. that they had to like take her to an operating room outside uh-huh. of the labor and delivery floor because they yeah. needed like more stuff. Stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised because I was on a different floor when I first got there and was we- I was wheeled just like down the hall there, mm-hmm. but then like afterwards we were brought up to like the. I was on two different floors, like, recovering. One of them was, like, more of, like, an ICU one. And then one was, like, the actual, like, postpartum one. Um, and neither of those floors were, like, where we first came in, where we operated. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's also, like, weird because, like, I still, like, I wish, again, like, for, like, instances like this that somebody could document these things. But, like, I don't know, like, when I saw her. Like, I remember seeing her. Because, and they told me that, too, because they were like, we're going to try and, like, do everything that we can, like, as soon as, like, you're like awake to bring you to see her. And I remember going to the NICU and seeing her. And I'm like, was I in a bed? Was I in a wheelchair? I don't know. But I remember, like, being, like, super drugged, like, like, very, very foggy memory. But I remember seeing her and, like, being able to, like, touch her, like, in the incubator. But then Tyler's like, I don't think that happened. He's like, I, when did you go to see her without me? And I'm like, I swear to you, I was down there. And they let me see her and touch her. And then, like, and then he's, of course, got pictures of me, like, recovering. And he's like, but I was with you in the recovery room. So I'm like, I don't even know if that was real. Like, I'm just, but I'm like, but I know what the room looks like. This was her room. Like, so I don't know. I don't know. So I don't actually, like, remember, like, the first time fully that I met her. You know what I mean? I know. The out of body oh, experience type yeah. thing, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. I know. And then I also like think about like the nurses in the NICU, like those angels, yeah. but like them like seeing like people like me come in drugged as drugged can be, not remembering, and then like who knows what I looked like? They're probably like, <laughs> this woman is on her deathbed. Get her out of this area right now. Or they're like, we've got your baby. Oh, totally. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Do what you do. I know. Well, and it was COVID, so it was like only you. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. That was, yeah. Right? Yeah. The yeah. grandmas, like our family, could oh, not yeah. meet her, mm-hmm. which was terrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was only us allowed in the NICU. Wow. Even your mom? Yeah. No. They, well, so she didn't really officially meet her, but so like after, so like I was still in the operating room. And then they got Sabrina intubated, like, when Tyler was in there. And he did get, like, a picture of her and, like, got to, like, see her. And then they, like, wheeled her down the hall, you know? And my mom was out in the hall. And so, like, she technically, like, got to see her, like, as she was, like, being wheeled down. Then once in the in the NICU, again, angel nurses, Sabrina had to get surgery. And it was, like, both of my mom and then Tyler's mom, my mother-in-law, were 
in the hospital that day, like with us, they couldn't go into the NICU, but they were like, you know, just like there to be support for us. And they like waited outside these doors. And one of the nurses t- specifically took Sabrina in her little like thing out there so they could like see her, they couldn't touch her or anything, but they could see her before she had to go into surgery, Aww. which was nice. Yeah. That's sweet. Mm-hmm. What kind of surgery did she have? So this was when she was like four months old, Okay. which so four months chronologically, but like really would have been like a month old. Like it's called adjusted age. Yeah. So she had to get what's called a fundoplication where they like tie off the top of the stomach basically because her reflux was so severe, which was one of the reasons why she had to be in the NICU for so long. Cause we were there for like four and a half months, which it, and a lot of times there's like kind of like different milestones that they have to hit, but a lot of preterm babies can still go home, you know, not after, you know, that long a time, as long as they can feed properly and they're gaining weight and, you know, their lungs are able to do what they need to do. But so she had all sorts of feeding disorders, though. I mean, this was just like one of like 10 things that was going wrong with her feeding, but her reflux was so bad that she like couldn't keep things down. So it's like she was gaining weight because she was on a feeding tube. But then it was like any type of like bottle feed or other things that they tried to do. I mean, the poor thing like just came right back up. And so they did a fun application and then they also put in her feeding tube into her belly at that point so that we could, because that was really the only option at that point in order to get her home, which worked. So we, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa. 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 Anyone want to take a break? Who wants a shot? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. We can take a break. I remember like being at Megan's birthday and like hearing about this and Oh my god. But, like hearing it again, mm-hmm. I have forgotten so many details, I think, just because yeah. it was traumatic for you, but also like hearing about your friend going through all yeah. of this was so scary. And yeah. I'm just like still trying to like put on a happy face right. in front of a, like a classroom full of right. students. Right after all yeah. of this happened again, was like, yes, everything's great, everyone. My friend, is, yeah. might be bleeding out. I don't know. I don't know. You no, know, no, no yes, I, no, I, I do. But you're right. It's all hard. The details I completely forgot about. Mm-hmm. But now hearing them all again, it's yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. You're just a superwoman. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of the Golden Hour Birth Podcast. That was part one of Bonnie's episode. We'll be back next week with part two, where she uh, gets into a little bit more of her postpartum. And we ask her uh, about a million follow up questions about her birth story. So um, yeah, tune in next week for that. And um, if you would want to share our podcast with a friend or a family member, that would be much appreciated. Um, just get the word out. We're trying to get the word out more about our podcast. Um, but anyways, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.